Happy Thursday. It is March 21st. I'm your host, Kimberly Perot, and joining me in the studio is Kevin Shields, and today is going to be a fun one. It is National Lemons and Oranges Day. We threw ours in a blender, so let's take a look at that recipe that we did earlier this month. Plus, we've got Vale Dance Festival here in studio, all of that and more. So hour one of Good Morning Vale starts right now. Well, good morning and happy Thursday. Kim hit it on the head. We're going to have a great show for you today. Outside with this local weather, it's really starting to change a little bit. Let's take a look. Getting up today, 29 degrees, a high today of 50 degrees as that little heat wave continues here through the valley. As we look at Vail by the hour, things start to warm up after that noon hour and kind of stay consistent. Gets up to 48 and then slightly drops just a little bit. This evening, we're going to see a low of 26 and a 60% chance of, I guess we can call it a spring mix now that we're not in winter. So kind of a 60% chance of precipitation. Higher elevations, we'll see some snow. Lower elevations, we'll see a little bit of rain, some sprinkling coming down. So some clouds are going to be moving in with some light winds out of the west, 5 to 10 miles an hour. So not a lot to worry about there. This is what we're talking about right here with Friday. Again, that heat wave continuing through Friday and Saturday. And then temperatures start to drop just a little bit dropping down to 40 on Sunday as we see some snow showers moving in. So that's very good news as we see snow moving in on Sunday, Monday, and then possibly Tuesday with that 40% chance of precipitation and a little bit lower temperatures as we exit that weekend that we're planning to have. So it should be a nice weekend coming up our way. Now moving over to Beaver Creek, looking at that snow report, nothing reported in the last 48 hours, 242 inch season total. That's a 61 inch base, so we need a little bit of snow out there. 25 lifts are spinning at Beaver Creek, 166 trails with 100% of the terrain over there. Now, moving over to Vail, kind of the same story over there. Nothing reported in the last 48 hours. 246 inches for the season total. 64 inches is the base depth there. Now, Vail Resorts is really not reporting anymore kind of the percentage. So uh, we're, we're kind of on that down. We know when that happens, then we're kind of moving towards the season close, which is going to happen in a month. It is going to, going to happen in a month. You know, I, I see a lot of other resorts outside of here extending their their close dates, but we were, we're already closing pretty late. So yeah, we'll see what happens, you know, towards closing day, you know, as the as the mountain condenses in, they'll have two or three runs. It'll still have a little bit of snow on it. I know <laughs> a few weeks ago up at Beaver Creek, they were still trying to blow to get on that main centennial run so they can possibly extend or at least make it through the end of the season. Oh, well, hopefully we make it there, but it's been a great season so far and I'm excited for spring, you know? Me too. Spring is, is, has sprung and... Wait, three, four days into <laughs> official spring now, so... It's pretty great, but we've got lots of fun spring activities and recipes and things that we'll be talking about in this first hour, so I'm excited. We got Easter just around the corner. We do. We are officially, what, close to a week away. That's right. Almost. A little over. So lots of exciting things happening, and we'll show you how to do some fun things in the kitchen to entertain your friends and family and... Entertain yourself. Entertain That's what I do all That's the really time. That's really what it is, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Sit around and laugh to myself every now and then. <laughs> And I just laugh at Kevin, so <laughs> that's how it goes. But we've got a lot happening on this Thursday morning edition, so we'll be right back after this quick break. Good morning, Vale. Join us on board the Leadville Railroad Winter Express. Stay cozy in our heated lounge cars. Marvel at the stunning winter landscape. Sip delicious hot chocolate. Don't forget to check out our new specials. Book today at LeadvilleRailroad.com. 
Hi, it's Julio from TV8 Vail. Do you ever wonder why our tagline is there's more for you on 92? Because we're always bringing you more. More Good Morning Vail from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. all year long. More local coverage with Vail Vibes and Covered Bridge on TV8. More opportunities to participate with new roundtable panels on Mountain Perspectives and our new Spanish programming block coming this fall. Find us on Comcast Xfinity Channel 92 on YouTube or our website at tv 8 valecom For TV8 in Vail, I'm Avisha Scarborough at the Gerald R. Ford Amphitheater. We'll see you next time. Hi friends, welcome to a little behind the scenes. I'm Avisha Scarborough and I'm so excited to be part of the team at TV8 in Vail. I love the outdoor lifestyle here. I love the arts and culture and I love being part of this community. My show is called Vail Vibes with Avisha where I tell you about all the amazing activities going on here in Vail and surrounding areas all year round. It is National Oranges and Lemons Day, and we used ours to put it in a blender thanks to a viral TikTok recipe that I found, and I cannot wait to show you this one because it is quite delicious. Let's take a look. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> You know, I love to follow all the TikTok trends on um, in regard to food and recipes. Yep. That's really the only thing I use it for. So I saw this whole viral orange blender cake, and I thought, we have to absolutely we have to try make, it. We have to try we it. We have to try it. So I did read that it is important what type of orange that you pick because they have varying levels of sweetness, plus with like the seeds and the skin, you really want Get to it. use like a thinner skin. Right. So we're using a whole navel orange. These luckily with don't With very have thick skin. <laughs> like I'd say Kind of like you, so, you've got thick skin. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to yeah. working next to you, Kevin, I do. <laughs> but if you check this out, you can kind of see that the skin is like, it's a, I'd say it's thin to medium sized, right? Right. So we basically, we quartered it up, or you quartered it up. I did. Because you don't want the seed in it, because the seed actually creates a bitter taste to it. Right. And so, uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. But what you want to do is actually just throw all of the ingredients, the wet ingredients in the blender first, and okay. that includes the orange. All right, so I am we, the Robin to your Batman, you so are you the tell Robin. me what. <laughs> the Robin to my yeah. Batman. So we've got four eggs sitting out at room temperature, and okay. we put the, we've got them here in a Tupperware. So we're going to crack the four eggs into the blender, okay. or you can do the oranges. It really doesn't matter. We're going to let Kevin go ahead and, and be the the egg I'm cracking the egg master. Cracker. And it's pretty pretty great. And then it um it really you can use self rising flour or you can use regular flour depending on what you have on hand. And I had regular flour, so that's what we're going to use with regular flour and baking powder. Okay. And then uh, yeah, we're cracking all of the all four eggs, eggs. All four eggs. The eggs. 
Then we're going to throw in our orange. Now, okay. you peel and all. Just peel and all. Just toss wow. it in there. Okay. Insane, right? I'm, I'm really excited about I this. I don't know Apparently, about this, Kim. It creates like a, a fun, like really citrusy flavor and texture. Then we've got lemon extract. We want to do about a teaspoon of the teaspoon lemon extract. Teaspoon of the lemon extract. Got yep. it. And then we also need to include oil. And that's like the basis of all of our wet ingredients. So you don't have to use the lemon extract at least that's what i've been reading i just literally put it in and you <laughs> said well you don't have to use it but i heard it gives it a little bit more pizzazz when okay we want to pizzazz it up the flavors so we and did then that oil. and then we've got oil i think we need to use about three quarters of a cup of avocado oil which okay. i've never seen a cake made with avocado oil. oh before, yeah i've seen an avocado cake one time <laughs> So Kevin, made. no pressure, but you know, it's got to be exact. Yeah, I'm pretty darn good at this <laughs> eyeballing thing. I can tell. Okay. So we were putting that in there and then we're going to blend it up and then we'll do the wet or the dry ingredients afterwards. Now the key with the dry ingredients is apparently this is what all the TikTokers are saying. This is what we've heard. This is what we've heard. I do my research, but you know, I can't say that I'm a... I'm an expert and I've ever made this Oh, no, let's before. just say you're an expert. I'm an, I'm an expert. Let's just know? say it. What, get it out you, there. Kevin, between the two get of us, it out I think there. we're going to get it done. So we're going to go ahead and um, just blend this. We're just going to do a nice uh, nice little medium blend. Okay. Let's see what happens. Looking great, looking great. It's very loud. It is very loud. So next thing, we're, we're going to add two cups of all-purpose flour. Okay and then three quarters of a tablespoon of um, baking powder. Looking good. Plus sugar, we need to add our sugar. Sugar is always key when it comes to the cake. All right, let's see how we blended. Look at that. I mean, you can still see a little bit of the... Um, it here. smells absolutely incredible. Sounds great, doesn't it? And you can see in the in the blender that uh, the peel is pretty um pretty, pretty diced up. Yeah, it smells great actually. Did a good job. Very. I'm now I'm, I'm awakening. You know, it's the uh, the orange and the citrus zest. Okay, so now we're gonna add two cups of flour in here, okay. and then also um, about yep. There we go. Looking great. And then we need to make sure that we've got our three quarters of a tablespoon of um, baking powder because that's what's going to make the cake rise right so if you're using self-rising flour you don't need the baking powder which is great okay you're nailing it kevin look at this you know and i'm actually impressed yeah, no can, flour kevin on can that measure. wonderful navy sweater that you're wearing there all right, all right so we got the flour we got need the flour. three quarters of a cup of avocado oil we added that in we need to make sure that we add one cup of the sugar which ah. Is somewhere around here. Right here. I think we've got some granulated sugar also off the off the camera. So we'll take a look and see. Do we need granulated or powder? We need on this? granulated. Oh, for crying out oh, loud. You know what? We're gonna use powder. We're gonna use powder see. today. We'll see what happens. What happens viral. here on TV? It's, it's live you know? TV. It is what it is. It's viral. One whole <laughs> it is cup. Viral. One whole cup. There okay. you go. <laughs> and then you can also use the powdered sugar for later as well. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> there we go. I there mean, we go. I think that looks good to me. So we're going to dump that in there, okay. and then three quarters of a tablespoon of baking powder, and then you don't apparently you don't want to just like do a real blend on it. You just need to kind of pulse it so okay. that everything kind of gets mixed in because if tablespoon you it, did you say um, three quarters of a tablespoon? Okay. Yeah, just like that, looking good. And then I guess if you pulse it or you blend it too hard, it makes the batter really <laughs> dense and thick. So we're just going to lightly pulse this until. It's all blended. That's what I'm hearing. Nobody likes dense Hey, you know, if it's with a cup of coffee in the morning, I don't care how it, what yeah. the texture is like. We got it. It smells we'll delicious. Get this. It does smell All right, good. so we're going to go ahead and luckily we've got this handy dandy dough button on our blender. Okay. And we're just going to blend it a little bit. It's nice and low while we're letting it blend. You know, you were in sunny Florida, so does this smell yeah. like Florida? Yeah, it smells like Florida. <laughs> The sunshine state. The sunshine and, in my opinion, the citrus state. Yes. Okay. Let's take a look and see how it's looking. Yeah, looking pretty good. We're going to just do a little bit more. You know what I love about this cake, speaking of Florida? What? You know, my grandparents used to live in Florida. And okay. I spent a lot of time going to orange picking groves oranges. and picking oranges. Picking oranges. Fresh pressed oranges. I can tell. Your hair and your skin tone. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's why my hair is yeah. red, because I ate a lot of oranges. That's probably I it. I think that's a fact. <laughs> True. All right. This batter is looking great. It's 
smells great. Kay. So the next thing we're gonna do, I guess, is line our um, our cake loaf with parchment paper, or if you don't have that, you can use the avocado oil spray. So you pick parchment paper, avocado oil. What's I know it? the pressure is on. Using this. There you go. Yeah, we're just gonna spray it, spray the corner. That's at least that's what they're telling us. Yeah, so that's what TikTok says. That's so that's what, what we're TikTok doing. Says. And yes, I have been consulting my phone with TikTok as we've been going through this recipe. Um, we're gonna go ahead and then we're just gonna scoop it into the pan. And um, we've got a couple extra oranges. We're, what do we preheat the oven to? We preheated the oven to. It depends on what recipe version you're looking at. 180 degrees Celsius. Whoa. Or, which roughly translates to about 350. Yeah. 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 Okay. According to Google. Got it. <laughs> According, According to, to the TikTok worldwide Google. interweb. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just clean this off really quickly. And then we're going to um, dump the dough. And it's okay if we've, we've got one small loaf pan, but you know, you can make this. This is basically, in my opinion. When do we zest? We zest if we want to, to make a frosting. Okay. If we want to, or you can just kind of zest on top. I, th I, s I think we should just sprinkle it with some powdered sugar when we're done uh, cooking. Yeah, keep it so simple. Got to keep it simple. It's live right? TV. It is live TV. <laughs> All right, so we've got that. And then we're just going to pour it in about uh, two thirds of the way up to okay. the, the lake because it is going to rise. Because I'll of the pour it, you scrape. All right. I'm going to make sure we don't over pour it because then it's going to explode in the oven there. But so man, how far up do you go? How far does this I would rise? Say about, about two thirds of the of the pan you want to fill, and then um, you know that's why if you did the parchment paper, Kevin, we if it rises a little bit above over, it stays in its shape. I think that looks great to me. And then anything in excess, you can make mini loaves. Why not? Right? Mini loaves. Why not? Yeah, who likes a, mini a little loaf? muffin pan? A little muffin pan, which we do have, and we'll do that later. But have you seen the muffin man? Do you know the muffin man? I do know the muffin <laughs> man. <laughs> do you know the muffin man, Kevin? No, I don't. All right, so I like to do this just to kind of level it out a little bit. Okay. But man, it smells good. It smells delicious. It smells fresh. I think I'm uh, my senses have awakened, just like my mind. Okay. And here we are, we're ready to uh, Let's pop ready it into to party that 180 this, degrees Celsius oven. Or 350 degrees. Okay. And then you bake it for about 35 to 45 minutes, depending on your loaf size, depending on how hot your oven actually is. Because you know, did you know, fun fact, your oven is not necessarily as hot as it says it is. So you try to preheat it as long as possible. Yeah. Yeah. That's why sometimes people put a little thermometer in there. That's exactly so you right. you actually see. You know, so that's it. So here we are, we baked a cake, a loaf. Okay, 45 cake. minutes. 40, 35 to 45. 35 to 45. So, we'll, we'll so you gotta stay tuned it. for a while to see the outcome of this. And we'll show you, show you how it turns out. The viral whole orange blender cake. It's pretty great. I think you could probably cheat with this one if you wanted to and use a regular cake mix. But I'm so glad we did. Why that would you? Exactly. Why would it you? It was easy. To and it's fun. This blender. was kind of a fun thing to do. It was I fun. was <laughs> I was a doubter. You were doubting Kevin on this one, but I tell you, the aroma coming out of the oven, and I it's took true. a peek, and it looks great. Well, Kevin, have I ever steered you wrong in any recipes? There? Just twice. <laughs> Just two times. <laughs> Just two times. You know what? Two times is better than three times. So let's take a look at it. So if you wanted, like I've heard, if you wanted to cool the cake first and let the drizzle kind of settle on top without it soaking into the cake, then you like let it fully cool before you put it on. But I love to have like that delicious like it's got to be warm frosting kind yeah. of melted into it. So it looks great. I love that you flipped it over on the cutting board and not on the plate that we have sitting here, Kevin. Well, th you do this. So now it's right there, side up. There we go. Doubting Tim. Uh, you know, you know today this is, is a Kevin professional said. production. It is. You and know, we got we to we look at it. We should be laughing at our colleagues. Now, so putting our homemade little glaze thing That's on true. here, we've got, we've zested one orange. We put a little bit of vanilla mm -hmm. extract. A little bit of the orange extract in there, some powdered sugar, stirred it up, so that's good to go. It looks great, and then obviously you want some sort of milk to uh, to blend yeah, it all coconut together. Milk. We use yeah. coconut milk, which is dairy free. Obviously, you know I think this whole this whole recipe is dairy free, so it's going to be a great one to have with coffee when we're mm. done with the show here. So we'll go ahead and put a little bit of drizzle on it. And okay. Then, uh, now, so one thing I like to do when I drizzle ooh. is I'll usually take and I'll cut down about an inch into the pieces. It looks delicious. And then I like to drizzle on top with the slices in. Oh my gosh, yes. 
That's because how I, this way you get, you know, you get it down into the cake a little bit. That's exactly how I apply my butter to my baked potato. Oh, it is not. <laughs> it is. I slice it down. I got that from my dad. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it looks delicious. And then if you, we wanted to add a little bit more powdered sugar to it, you can, but yeah. uh, we've got some here just in case. But man, oh man, that looks, that looks incredible. Delicious. Is it time to cut into it? Try it. I'm gonna try it. We've got the there knife, go. I'm going in. Okay, I'm more of a centerpiece, but I, a center kind of slice girl, yeah. but I'm gonna And go. I know the viewers cannot smell this, but it is incredible. It's, it just smells it, amazing. To, honestly, it reminds me of summer and springtime. And man, this would be a great, um, I'm just gonna have a small little piece have here. Have a small little piece. Here we go, three. Mm. Oh yeah, it says it wow. all. Mm -hmm. that, that face speaks volumes. It's moist. I know that we use powdered sugar, <laughs> not regular sugar, but I tell you what. Maybe, that's, perfect, maybe that's something you change. You don't want it too sweet. The perfect amount of sweetness, oh, it's so good. It's light, it's fluffy. It's definitely got all of the moisture in it that we need. So it's a it's a perfect breakfast cake or right. anytime cake. We're gonna dig into this and be right back with more. Good morning, Bill. Each week on the tech show, you can look forward to the latest in technology and how you can use it too. We'll also chat with leading experts and you'll find out if the latest gadget will take my money or not. Don't miss the tech show, tech your local listings. Thank you for watching Good Morning Vale. Have an amazing day. Get on out there, soak up that sunshine. We'll see you tomorrow right here for more Good Morning Vale. Bye everyone. Hi, I'm Gretchen Bleshaw. You might recognize me from the glitz and glam with Gretchen. Maybe you hear my voice on the radio from time to time or see me out at a concert or two. I love concerts. If you see me out, the long mermaid hair, I'm almost six foot tall, it's hard to miss. Come and say hi, give me a high five and make sure to watch me right here on TV8. My name is Tyler Alvarez. Uh, I work here at Sweet Basil in Vail. I'm a bartender here. I originally came to Vail to snowboard. I slept on my sister and my cousin's couch for what was supposed to be a week, it turned into two months. And then I found my own spot and then kind of made friends and worked different places in the valley and kind of just fell in love with it more and more every single day and ended up finding my way to Sweet Basil through some friends who worked here and all the great things that I heard about it. And yeah, I've been here for four years now. It, it's hard to wake up in Vail and, and be upset when you look outside. It's just beautiful. My favorite part about working at Sweet Basil is definitely that I could be proud about everything that we're putting out, whether it's food, drinks. We also get to be really creative here. Uh, the bartenders, the, the whole team here, we, we workshop our menus every season. So we'll start with a spirit or an ingredient and then we get to be really creative and, and make a whole project of it. And then when we get the final product, it's, it's a drink that we're all really proud of for the whole menu. And that's super fun, just being able to be creative and, and work with new things. And the most fun cocktails to make though are definitely the ones that we get to create from scratch. When people take a sip and say, oh my God, this is delicious, or they just love it. And that's probably the most fun for me, the, the, the creativity behind it and making unique cocktails. That for me, that would be the most fun drink to make, just the, the one that you start from scratch and then people are excited about. I'm Tyler, I live and work in Vail. Come see me at Sweet Basil. As always, we want to keep our eye on that weather, and today is going to be another gorgeous springtime day. So let's take a look at today. You can see it's a high of 50. We've got some sunshine with a few afternoon clouds, but really not too much. We do have a storm rolling in throughout the later part of the weekend, so we'll start to see a little bit of change in weather there. We've got winds coming from the west by southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. As we look at the hourly, 44 degrees at noon, and we're looking at 48 at 4 o'clock. A little bit of clouds in the afternoon as it starts to roll in, and then some showers potentially at 8 p.m. with a high of 41 at 8 o'clock. 
looking at that I-70 corridor. Great day. We've got about a 10 degree difference between Eagle and Denver. 67 in Denver, 50 in Vail, 53 in Avon. And as always, Eagle is a little bit warmer with 57 for the high and some cloud coverage throughout the valley. Looking at tonight, we are looking at a rain and snow mix, definitely a springtime mixture. Now that we are officially in the eyes of spring, cloudy with a mix of rain and snow. Winds coming from the west at 5 to 10 miles per hour, a low of 26 tonight and about 60% chance of that springtime mix, not the wintery mix. So lots happening, but here's a quick look at our five-day forecast. It's going to be a good one until we've got all of that snow that comes in. But the Vibes Report, we want to check it out and see what's happening around town this weekend. Welcome to the Vibe Report with Avija. This is where I tell you all about the exciting happenings around town. As always, the village is alive with music and some great snow means some great opera ski. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, there's live music at the Red Lion, Sonnenalp, High, Shakedown Bar, The Lodge at Vale, Gambit Bar, and Park Hyatt. Chasing Rabbits is having a glitter and ice party on Saturday, and on Sunday, they're featuring DJ Pablo Fierro. On Sunday, Ein Prosit in Avon is having a Soups and Spirits fundraiser to benefit the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. On Friday, March 22nd, the Valar Performing Arts Center will be having Body Traffic, a Los Angeles-based dance presentation. This weekend is the official Mountain Pride Queer Ski Weekend. There are activities all weekend long. Be sure to check out mountainpride.com for all the details. On Saturday, March 23rd, the Alpine Art Center is having cocktails and canvas. More details can be found at alpineartcenter.org. That's it for this weekend's Vibe Report, friends. Be sure to follow the Veil vale Vibes TV8 Instagram for more info. And as always, spread the good vibes. Did you know that all Eagle County residents and visitors can get a free Eagle Valley Library District card? All you need is a photo ID. You get our online databases and resources, free music, free streaming, all from wherever you have internet access. Free audiobooks and e-audiobooks straight to your phone. Go into your Eagle Valley Library District branch today and get your library card. TV8 te brinda la mejor programación en español todos los días. Sintoniza Conexión Latina los lunes, miércoles y viernes a las 7 de la tarde con repeticiones los fines de semana. Además, te presentamos nuestro nuevo programa Sabores y Creaciones, donde hemos juntado tus recetas y manualidades favoritas en un solo lugar los martes y jueves a las 7 de la tarde. Y por último, disfruta de Daily Flash Latino con noticias y entretenimiento en tendencia los sábados a las 7 de la tarde. Te esperamos por el canal 92 de Comcast, nuestra página de Facebook TV8 Conexión Latina, nuestro canal de YouTube TV8 Bell Good Morning Bell o nuestra página web tv8bell.com. Well, Archer and I are going to get headed on further down the trail, but I hope you'll catch up with us a little bit later. Hi, I'm Ben Roof and I'm one of the new hosts here at TV8. I'm so excited to share all of my explorations throughout the Vale Valley with my dog, Archer, where we'll be taking you to hiking trails, biking trails, maybe we'll go rafting, fishing, or whatever else we can come up with. I'm so excited to share all of that with you in my new segment, Outdoor Adventures. Don't forget to catch up with us every day right here at TV8 Vale or at TV8Vale.com because there's always more for you on 92. Hi, I'm Gretchen Pleshaw, host of Good Morning Vale. Now we're doing something really cool for Easter. Starting Monday the 18th, every single day, you're gonna get a new word. So if you watch every day and unscramble the words to make a sentence, you can win what's in this egg. Make sure and tune in every day. Good Morning Vale. Join us on board the Leadville Railroad Winter Express. Stay cozy in our heated lounge cars. Marvel at the stunning winter landscape. Sip delicious hot chocolate. Don't forget to check out our new specials. 
Book today at LeadvilleRailroad.com. For fun and adventure, join me on Elizabeth Stanton's Great Big World. Find out where I'll be going next and which celebrities I'll be bringing along with me. I'll show you amazing destinations with lots to explore, and you'll get to know my celebrity guests the way they really are, up close and personal. We'll travel the world, experience new cultures, and together, try to make a difference. I'm Elizabeth Stanton, saying the world's a big place, and I'm going to show it to you. Welcome back to Good Morning Vale. We have all kinds of arts and entertainment in and around the valley. One of the best series is the Vale Dance Festival. Features a lot of different things, a lot of different artists, but I've got Damien with me today to talk a little bit about what to expect for the 2024 season. Damien, how are you this morning? I'm good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Well, I was looking through the lineup on everything that's going on and kind of all the swerves on how the dance through history and everything you're doing. Tell me a little bit about the artists and what we should expect this year. Well, that's interesting. You should bring that up to start with. First of all, just kind of thinking about summer is uh, giving me a lot of hope. It's very cold <laughs> here this morning. Uh, in New York, and I'm sure it is there too. But think about those warm nights uh, outside and, you know, all the artists and the musicians and the, the kind of feeling of community that the festival brings fills me with hope. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, and you, you mentioned this idea of swerve. So one of the big performances we're going to do is uh, an up close, which means kind of its performance, its rehearsal, uh, it's really getting into it and seeing the artists kind of at work around that concept of swerve. Now, what swerve means in this context is how the art changes. When did ballet become ballet? When did modern dance become modern dance? How did that morph into other things? How does street dance fit in? What happened with tap dance? How did that happen? And we've got the greatest dancers in each form in one place at one time. So we're going to put it all together in this amazing up close that's going to chart basically the history of dance uh, through performance. So you see it happen. So I'm super excited about that. And it's kind of a, a, a statement about what we do, which is assemble these amazing artists in, in dance and in music who represent the best in the world uh, and then put them in one place and make a season, make a menu, essentially. So we'll start out this season with great companies, the Limon Dance Company, Dance Theater Harlem's going to be back. Uh, we're going to have Colorado Ballet in the house because it's super important, I think, to support uh, the local. So we have a whole performance nice. actually called Colorado Dances uh, with Colorado Ballet and Cleo Parker Robinson Dance and Dance Aspen, the newest company uh, in the state coming out of Aspen. You know, we've got all these artists. We've got Michelle Dorrance, uh, just to name one, doing a show over at the Villar Center, uh, really encapsulating what tap dancing is today and how we got here. Uh, and it's all through performance. So it's like, you know, getting to see the real thing, basically. Yeah, you've got, you mentioned the uh, Dance of Harlem. They started back in 1969. And what's really nice to see is how that has evolved over time, but the integrity of the expression of the dance has stayed true to its form. That's correct. I mean, Dance Theater Harlem is just a, a rocket ship in so many ways. And it, it was born, as you said, in 1969, uh, created by the extraordinary New York City ballet dancer, kind of my one of my predecessors, Arthur Mitchell, uh, who passed away, sadly, uh, not that long ago. But Arthur's dream coming out of the assassination of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was to create a company uh, that brought in all voices, that amplified uh, very specifically uh, dancers in the classical tradition who were not represented on the stage. And he created Dance Theater Harlem, and it has grown into a total juggernaut of both classicism and contemporary ballet. Uh, so you'll see that on their main show uh, on that first weekend in Vail. You'll have the classicism of George Balanchine and Allegro Brilliant, Ch Tchaikovsky. And then you'll have Billy Forsyth, you know, one of the greatest yeah. living contemporary dance makers doing work to, to James Blake, you know, where Blake works for, created for Dance Theatre of Harlem. Yeah. Now, another thing that is great with the festival is you've got an artist in residence, dancers in residence, a composer in residence. Can you tell the viewers yeah. a little bit about what that means? 
Well, it means they work hard. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, because they they really kind of span everything. They're a part of so many different types of performances. They're thought leaders. They give conversations on dance. They do uh, lots of different types of things. So you mentioned our artists in residence, and this year we've got the great ballerina, one of the greatest ballerinas in the world, Sarah Mearns, uh, will be a dancing artist in residence, and then we've got Jamar Roberts. Uh, as artists in residence and Jamar was a fantastic leading dancer at Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater for many years. Uh, he was actually in my very first season programming at Vail Dance Festival. He was one of the stars dancing uh, back in 2007. And in the last years, he's become one of the most in-demand choreographers in the world. Uh, he's created a few works for Vail, but this year is a little different where we're going to capitalize on his presence to make a major work. Uh, we're going to revive some of the things he's made in the past, and we'll rely on Jamar to be kind of a creative engine within the festival. Same thing with our composer in residence, Caroline Shaw. Caroline is the youngest Pulitzer Prize winning composer in history. Uh, she is uh, versatile to the sense of from producing in uh, in rock music to uh, the most pristine kind of classically baroque based music, uh, wow. and she her, she's an engine as well, and she'll be making a new work as well as collaborating on different pieces, bringing that musical sensibility uh, into the mix. Well, this season definitely will not disappoint as the Vale Valley Foundation brings in the Vail Dance Festival. Always exciting, always a lot of culture that's infused in our community through this festival. So Damien, thank you so much for, I know, I all your more. hard work. I got one more for you just okay. to whet people's appetite, which is, you know, we are all about, like I said, celebrating the history, figuring out where these things came from, but we finish with the new always. Our closing night is now premieres with seven world premieres created especially for the festival by some of the most important choreographers of the day in different styles. So always think about that trajectory. What you're gonna get at, at Vail Dance Festival is the full picture from history to the up to the second you're standing there in the theater. Well, tell us a little bit, Damien, since you brought that up, how is that decided? How do you decide on what you're bringing in out of how to put all this together? Yeah, so that's uh, it's such a challenge, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I it's so hard to say what is the most important thing right now. But honestly, it has a lot to do with the artists themselves. I look at each individual artist who we get to bring and we say, what's the next step for them? What are the most important things for them to do? And then you overlay that with what's the most important things happening in dance today. And then you overlay that with where's the history. So the choices are difficult, but they're based in individuals and they're based in the excitement of the moment. I always like to leave enough room that literally if I go somewhere tonight, like I'm going somewhere tonight to see something and I think, oh my God, this audience has to see it in Vail. I want to leave room for that. Well, thank you so much. And again, that expression takes on its own form with each individual because as it resonates to each one of us individually, those takeaways are unbelievable. So thank you for all that hard work. Thank you for putting this together. It's going to be a great 2024 season. And thank you to the Vail Valley Foundation for allowing us to have this great event here in our community. Great we'll be, to be with you. We'll be back soon with more Good Morning Vail. It's the fastest half hour in television. Toyota's Race Week takes you inside the high-speed world of NASCAR. Go behind the scenes for a look into the high adrenaline world of motorsports and hear from your favorite drivers as they discuss the drive to a championship. If you love NASCAR, you won't want to miss Toyota's Race Week. America was built on a love for the outdoors. We are a nation of sportsmen, blessed with magnificent natural resources. With broad interests across water and field, we are united in our devotion to nature and conservation. Join us every week for the best shows celebrating the outdoor lifestyle. Outdoor America, live free. Join us on board the Leadville Railroad Winter Express. Stay cozy in our heated lounge cars. Marvel at the stunning winter landscape. 
sip delicious hot chocolate. Don't forget to check out our new specials. Book today at LeadvilleRailroad.com. When you're in Vail, you're in vacation mode, and you need a flexible home tour experience that fits into your schedule. We've transformed how you view and buy homes in the Vail Valley. With immersive, cutting-edge technology, you can explore properties 10 times faster. In our lounge, we guide you through this digital world on a 16-foot screen where you can imagine your next home in comparison to your favorite recreational spots. Say goodbye to multi-day home tours and hello to a quick stop between your other plans. That's the power of the immersion theater. I'm Amy Goodman, host of Democracy Now! Our independent news hour offers diverse perspectives and unique opinions often unheard in the mainstream media, live as the news unfolds. Tune in for Democracy Now!, The War and Peace Report, weekday mornings at 9 and evenings at 6 on TV8 Vale, Comcast Xfinity, Channel 92. There's more for you on Channel 92. Welcome back to Good Morning Vale. We just got able to talk to Dance Festival here in Vale coming up 2024 season is going to be absolutely incredible, bringing more arts, culture and entertainment into a valley. But our valley also has a lot of different medias when it comes to art. Let's take a look at some photography here. Welcome back to Good Morning Vale. I am very, very thrilled about this. I have a dear friend and photographer extraordinaire, Milo Gladstein. How are you doing, Milo? I'm doing good. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, it's so good to see you. See you in, well, I almost said in real life, but see you over the video, you know. Second I know, best. we only get to see each other once or twice a year, but it's so good to be here and thanks for having me. Of course. So Milo, just so we can let everyone know, Milo and I met years ago. Was it X Games or Dutour? I think it was due tour at first and then X Games due tour every year after that. Yeah. So. And Milo, you, I know you are very humble, but you are an amazing, phenomenal photographer. How did you get started? I don't even know. This is great for me to find out as a friend as well. How did you get started um, taking pictures? Because you are insanely talented. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've pretty much always had a camera in my hand. I got started um, in kind of the street photography vein and <clears throat> moved into other things like um, outdoor sports and things like that. Adventure sports, whitewater rafting. I've been a climber for 10 years Yeah, uh, almost. So kind of always been taking out the camera climbing and stuff. And um, I'm still a student at Colorado State University and found my way into a media and society class. And uh, they told me about the student newspaper, the Rocky Mountain Collegian. Yeah. And uh, the newsroom is in the basement of the student center. And I kind of always joke that I walked into the basement and I never walked out. And <laughs> here I am all these years later. So That is brilliant. And you're actually the photo director, right, of the Collegian magazine. Um, yeah, so this year um, I'm co-photo director with uh, my good friend Garrett Mogul. We both took over, so um, we're running the whole visual side of the paper, which has been an absolute blast, and we have such an incredible staff, and it's been really great to um, really try to curate the best news possible for the Fort Collins community. Well, I have to tell you, one of my favorite things, truly, and I'm not just saying this because we're friends, of the X Games, of Dutour, of all these events that we're so blessed to get to go and hang out together is seeing your photos behind the scenes um, at the media tent because they are insanely amazing. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's one of my favorites. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about the photo? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so kind of for me being able to go to do tour and X games is kind of a dream come true. Um, I've always loved snowboarding and obsessed over every snowboarding movie as a kid. Yeah. Um, and specifically, I mean, this image of Zeb Powell is probably one of my favorites that I've <sighs> taken. Um, and I, the first year I applied for do tour, I had no intention of getting it as 
you know, a kid on student media and I got the credential and went and just had the best time ever surrounded by all these incredible athletes who are also incredible people. Um, yeah. I never thought I'd meet that I just always saw through the computer screen on movies and stuff. And so this image in particular was at X Games this past year um, of Zeb on top of the right before he dropped in for the knuckle huck event. Um, and, and that was fantastic. And so. I have to say about Zed, because, you know, I got to interview him and I adore him. This is a soft side of him that we're seeing in this photo. You captured a moment because he is a teddy bear and not everyone knows that. That captures his oh, yeah. like energy, his beauty. He is just a love. I adore him. Yeah, he is fantastic. I was, this was, I mean, this was the image I wanted to walk away with and happened to have the opportunity on top of the knuckle hook and everything kind of just came together in the middle of a snowstorm. And yeah, it was. I love it. it. Was incredible. All right. You, I want you to walk us through your photos. Is that cool? And kind of tell us about each one. <laughs> yeah. Put absolutely. you on the spot cool. here. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> Well, cool. um, this one was super fun. This was also from X Games. Um, you know, kind of got a lot of the standard shots, as as we call them. We go out and get the safe shots first. Of right. We know which images need to be published and things like that. Um, and then we kind of go for the more fun stuff. So these were really fun because um, I laid on the snow with my head against the big air yes. jump yeah. uh, kicker and basically just had to wait and time it. Yeah. based on what all the other photographers were doing. So you could kind of, almost like Formula One, you could see everybody's head snap up and kind of just trying to get it right at that right moment of just the skier framed against the sky, which is just incredible. I dig it. That is so awesome. I love it. Oh, I like this too. Yeah, this one's really, was really, really fun. Um, this was at night on um, the super pipe. And this was one of the images I've been trying to get for a long time, trying to position myself to frame uh, the riders right in between the two lights with the X Games logo against so the black rad. sky. Oh, um, it's one of those like perfect nights that was just clear, I mean, as can be, um, and was just trying to capture that just raw, super clean, huge method um, and was really stoked to be able to capture that. Are those stars that you can see as well in the background? Um, I'm not I, sure that that's dope. Might. Oh, it's so cool. Milo, I dig it. That's awesome. Right on. I mean, I don't seem shocked because I know you and I get to see these all the time, but these are brilliant. Absolutely. Oh, Burton, we need to send that to our buddies over at Burton. That's dope. I love that. Yeah, this, I mean, again, this was really fun. I think this one was at Dew Tour um, or maybe X Games. I can't remember, actually. Um, but this one was really fun. Just uh, had a really wide angle lens and kind of was actually a lot of these happened to be as I was moving position and the rider happened to kind of pop up over the edge right, right. in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this one was, this is also one of my favorites. Just, you can feel the size of the pipe and how high the rider is in the air. I mean, I, I love this photo. Well, and I should add to a lot of people don't understand, but Milo, like you get a perspective and we do as media to see a different, to see it in a different way, to see these events. And it's pretty special because the human, you know, everyone else that's going as a spectator really doesn't get to see these kind of um, moments. I mean, they see them, but in a different way, I should say. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really special to kind of be on the pipe, be right. on the knuckle as these athletes are doing their thing, which is just incredible to watch. And you get a whole other side of things that you would never see otherwise. And so it's cool to kind of feel like you're almost part of the action in that sense. A hundred percent. And as we look at some more of your photo, oh, I okay, I'm going to totally be quiet because I know you were so stoked about this particular photo. You ran back to um, the media tent and yeah, tell us all about this. Yeah, so this was actually um, kind of a coincidence. Um, I think the day before this, this was at Dew Tour this past yep. year. Um, this is Sylvia. She is rides for the German team and has been uh, just an incredible athlete for them for many, many years. Um, and she walked up to me uh, during one of the like open practices as I was taking photos and stuff and was like, hey, can you take some photos for me? And I said, sure. And, yeah. um, you know, ended up shooting for her for most of due tour this year, which was great. But it was funny because this was another one of kind of just walking by, happened to be walking by each other at that time that she snapped right. her board. Um, and she's like, oh, like, can we do a photo? I'm like, yeah, I have a great idea. Like, let's go over to the side. And um, I, I really wanted to capture like, her with the broken board and wanted to focus on the broken board, but kind of just with her eyes peeking out and kind of really it. 
personality in that. So. I love it. I remember when you showed me that, and I was like, okay, I have another job for you. You're gonna be, <laughs> you're gonna be the new <laughs> um, photographer for all the modeling as well, because you know product placement, man. You're really good at that. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Of course. Oh, what is this one? I dig it. This one was really fun. This was, um, this kind of goes along the vein of getting safe shots first and then moving into more fun stuff afterwards. This was at um, round, I believe it was 16 of the Arena Cross Championship uh, in Loveland, Colorado. Right on. Um, and this was an assignment I had kind of found um, for the paper and was like, hey, this is cool. We've never really covered anything in this vein. Um, so went to go cover this and this was really fun to play with some motion blur shots and this one came out really, really good and it took probably a good hour to try to figure out wow. the I wanted this to be and that the guys flying through the air in the back um, really adds to that. So, Well, yeah, and I really want to say too, I know that a lot of people just think, oh, photography, you point your camera. There's so much you've taught me. I've watched you <laughs> the past couple of years. There's so much more that goes into it and it's a true form of artwork. I mean, really, you have to have the eye, you have to know the equipment, you have to know the movement, all of it. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. A lot of the time we end up like, Garrett, my buddy Garrett and I's joke because we always end up like sprawled out, like yeah. on the ground, like <laughs> underneath things of like about to get run over all the time. I mean, I've been run over by many different things many times. Um, <laughs> It's just a blast. I remember a due tour, you guys, because I, you know, we love hanging out. And I was with you guys, and I forget what you were shooting, but someone was like, what are they doing? You were, like, on your knees, on your back, and I'm like, those are my homies. They're good. They're doing their <laughs> thing. Let them be. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. We're always kind of in weird positions. <laughs> yeah, but you weird. get the best product, so it works. And that last picture, was that the agricultural uh, food waste story? Yeah, yeah it was. Um, so this was a really um, good example of uh taking a local story and kind of a one-off story and making it um you know you kind of stumble into things um as a journalist that you wouldn't really know about otherwise so right. this uh, woman in the photo is uh jennifer Seewald, um and she owns a local hard cider bar here in fort collins right on and we just did a quick um we were doing a beer themed edition of the paper and we did a quick thing about cider for cider versus beer kind of a thing um and in talking to her she told me all about um how she got a grant from the usda wow. uh to build a mobile juicing trailer that she now takes all over the state of colorado and juices what are known as seconds so this is fruit that would never make it to market if okay. it weren't for um Jennifer was doing, it would be thrown in the trash. Um, and so she supports local agriculture through juicing all this fruit that wouldn't make it to market. And wow. she takes that juice and gives it to local distilleries, things like that, and then brings the rest of it back up to Fort Collins, where she distills it into hard cider and then sells it through her company. And she contributes over a million dollars back into the Colorado agriculture system wow. every year, single-handedly basically keeping all of these local farmers in business. That is amazing. That is so beautiful. And I love that you captured her spirit and her energy in that picture. What a beautiful smile. And you can tell she really loves what she's doing. That's pretty special. Oh, yeah. She always has a smile on her face. Um, I mean, as oh, wow. Was, Look at that. Uh, wow. Milo, that's she, dope. She's incredible. She's a fantastic woman um, and built this company from the ground up all on her own, basically. Um, mm. Started just here in Fort Collins and then expanded to going to farms all over the state. And I'm sure she uh, intends to expand that throughout the country as well, if possible. So. How cool. That is so beautiful. I love that. And then I think we have maybe at the end a rodeo picture. Oh, no, I was wrong. We don't. We have another one. There we... No, it's all good. What is this? Well, I know what it is, but who is this? Um, so this is the bass player for the Psychedelic Porn Crumpets band. Right they are on. Um, an awesome psychedelic rock band out of Australia. They came here to Fort Collins, I think, two weeks ago now or a week ago. Um, they just blew the doors off the place. I mean, they sold out our local theater on a Tuesday night, which was wow. awesome. That's um, awesome. So, I yeah, love that. Really I love it. Oh, wow. That's a cool yeah, this shot. Is another one from them. They, they're incredible. It was a blast. I do quite a bit of concert photography around here, um, shoot for a lot of the local bands, and it's really fun and kind of one of the places I get to be most artistic just because of light and 
things like that. And that so, and see, and that's perfect, Milo. This is a good transition because I was going to say the difference between your photography and when you're doing shows, like going and seeing music versus outdoor nature, is it night and day, right? I'm only assuming. Yeah, it's a very different thing. I think um, one, now that I've settled into shooting concerts, it's become a lot calmer and more of like a familiar kind of almost brain scrub, but also the place that I get to be most artistic Cool. Um, again, because of all the lights and colors and everything happening. It just is fantastic to be able to just be have complete artistic freedom, which is amazing. So. I love that. I love that so much. I am so inspired by all of these pictures. And what are you working at present day? Oh, here we go. That's the one. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is uh, I, I threw this image in here for to show because this, again, kind of similar to the Peach story, um, I currently am working on a rodeo story that was born out of a story that was done. I didn't write the original story um, that this photo was taken for. Um, I did the photos for the story, and it was done about the CSE rodeo team. Oh, right and, on. Um, I grew up about as far away from the sport of rodeo as you possibly can. This was the first interaction I had ever had with anybody in the sport of rodeo and i took this photo i actually have it printed and hanging on my wall i love um, it but i realized a couple months later that i just couldn't stop thinking about it and there was more to be done in this world in the world of western life and rodeo and so reached out to one of the contacts i had through doing taking photos for the story and ended up being launched into a whole world for the last uh, i believe it's been nine months now oh wow um, and hoping to uh, finish the story up in January for it to run at the National Western Stock Show. Um, cool. And basically following the theme of what does it mean to be a true cowboy. Uh, nice. So really, really excited to be kind of wrapping that up in the next couple months. Milo, you're amazing. How cool. Thank you for taking us through your photo journey, literally <laughs> all the <laughs> things. What are, so I know you're working on that and I wish we had some more time, but what are you the most stoked coming up to do? Um, I think right now, just trying to finish school, um, graduate, figure out my next steps. Obviously, uh, finishing the rodeo project is my main focus right now. I'm really, really excited for that. Um, for, and I've kind of branched out more for that. I'm doing photos, writing, and a documentary as well. So awesome. I think that's what I'm most excited about at the moment. Well, Milo Gladstein, we adore you here on Good Morning Vale. Thank you so much for your time. And I can't wait to see you soon due to our next games right around the corner. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you again for having me, Gretchen. Always great talking to you. So good seeing you, and we will talk to you again soon. And keep it right awesome. here. We have more Good Morning Veil vale to come. Good Morning Veil. Vale. Good Morning Veil. Vale. Eyepieces of Veil vale has been a fixture in the Veil vale community for over 30 years. From designer frames and sunglasses to high-performance sports frames, prescription goggles and in-demand accessories like helmets, goggle lenses, and foldable reading glasses, our inventory raises the optical bar. Visit one of our seven locations today and see why generations of loyal customers return time after time for our unmatched service and inventory. Eyepieces, the art of vision. Did you know that all Eagle County residents and visitors can get a free Eagle Valley Library District card? All you need is a photo ID. You get our online databases and resources, free music, free streaming, all from wherever you have internet access. Free audiobooks and e-audiobooks straight to your phone. Go into your Eagle Valley Library District branch today and get your library card. For fun and adventure, join me on Elizabeth Stanton's Great Big World. Find out where I'll be going next and which celebrities I'll be bringing along with me. I'll show you amazing destinations with lots to explore, and you'll get to know my celebrity guests the way they really are, up close and personal. We'll travel the world, experience new cultures, and together, try to make a difference. I'm Elizabeth Stanton, saying the world's a big place, and I'm going to show it to you. It's Kimberly with TV8 Vale here and we are doing our springtime and Easter giveaway. You get a chance to win this egg filled with incredible Easter and fun treats. 
but you have to collect all of the words to unscramble the sentence to become the winner. Today's word is, again, today's word is I-S. So make sure that you add all the words and collect them all together to unscramble the sentence and become the winner of the magical prize that's inside of this egg. You're watching K34QB, Vail, Colorado. It's Thursday, March 21st, and boy, is it a fun one today. Kevin and I are in the kitchen, but this time we're not cooking like, you, like we usually do. We're going to show you how to dye Easter eggs in a fun and maybe less messy way. We'll see what happens. But we've also got the Leadville Railroad, and the Hythe Vale is joining us here in studio. Plus, we've got some arts and entertainment for you. So all of that is getting started in the second hour, so let's take a look. Well, good morning. Grab your cup of coffee. We do have hour two starting right now. It's going to be a great show as the weather continues that dry, warm spell, but that's about to change. Let's take a look. Getting up today, 29 degrees, a high today of 50 degrees. So again, that nice heat wave, spring-like temperatures and dry zone is continuing throughout the valley. As we look at Vail by the hour, not a lot of changes there. Those constant 40 degree temperatures in the afternoon, heating up to the 50s and then slightly cooling off as we see tonight going all the way down to 29 degrees is going to be the cool, cool temperature tonight. Look at this Denver. You can't ask for a be more beautiful day there. Full sunshine, 67 degrees, 50 degrees in Vail, 53 in Avon, and 57 in Eagle as we look at that I-70 corridor. Lower temperatures this evening, cloud cover kind of moving in. We're going to have a, a spring mix of snow and a little bit of rain on those lower elevations as we move in through the evening. But then we're going to see some cooler temperatures start to come in on Sunday as those temperatures go down to the 40s and some snowfall starts to come in. So we're going to see that snowfall come in. 40 degree temperatures, a little bit cooler on Monday and Tuesday as we continue to see some snow showers coming through our way. So excited to see some of those cooler temperatures and we need that snow kind of rip through that dry spell that we've had here in the last few weeks. No snow reported in Beaver Creek over the last 48 hours. 61 inch base depth, so definitely some room to improve upon there. 25 lifts are still turning. 166 trails open. Beaver Creek is touting 100% terrain open right now. Vail Mountain, again, no snowfall over there in the last 48 hours. 246 inches for this season, 64 inch base depth, and they're not reporting any percentage of terrain open. They're kind of keeping that under cover. They just want you to get out and explore the mountain and see what you think. Nice word choice, touting. Touting, yeah. yeah. Haven't heard that one in they're a while. They're out there, they just say Beaver Creek, <laughs> hey, we're, we're gonna tell you we've got 100% <laughs> open. Vale, you can keep out under wraps, but we got 100%. It's true, you know, I feel like this time of year is very mixed feelings for me, you know. I'm ready for springtime, I see my friends and family around the country enjoying nice warm temps, but I'm not ready for the season to be over. Well, those mixed feelings go along with the weather, <laughs> with that mixed snow rainfall out there, that spring mix that we're talking about. It's true, and you know, you need to be able to to see appropriately depending on the weather. So we've got lots of great options for my pieces of ale. Yeah, we do like to talk about Smith here. Um, what a great name in eyewear in general, but their goggle system is, you know, not to be reckoned with. They've got some really good systems out there. And again, the quick lens, the magnetic ch uh, change that goes along with the lens and the chroma pop, which is really nice. It really increases your peripheral vision, both side to side and up and down because you've got a nice curved like lens underneath just like that kim <laughs> look at that but i like the curvature on the bottom it allows you so you don't have to tilt your head up and down to look for those imperfections that are identified through this chroma pop lens i felt like i looked like scuba steve right there you know you do without without the helmet and my ski gear on i definitely there feel like go. i'm about to go dive into the <laughs> ocean but you know what I, I love smith as well and chroma pop is such a fun word but it just it really kind of 
says how the lenses are. You know, the colors pop. It's very, uh, it's very fun. Yeah, you. great, great ventilation. And again, some of these goggles you want to check if you do wear eyeglasses and you don't have a prescription in the lens. They do offer a little extra space here if you do wear any kind of an eyewear under your glasses. And again, the great ventilation. But uh, Dr. Smith really did a good job down the road here in Rifle when he started developing these goggles. So great things out there. But if you're questioning what you need, go to the eyepieces of Ailes That's experts. True. Eight convenient locations and they've got everything you need. You go in, you talk to one of their experts and they're going to lead you in the right direction, whether it's apre ski and you want to look cool in your sunglasses or some great mountain gear. Get out there and check them out. It's true and they are celebrating their 40th anniversary this month so lots of exciting things happening. You know yeah. that they know what they're doing. Almost as old as me, gosh. <laughs> Almost, but you know what? Eyepieces of Vail, we absolutely love them and they're just uh, they're a fun fun group of people to be around and they're very knowledgeable about what they're doing so head on over to one of their locations and check them out but in the meantime we're gonna get in the kitchen we're gonna try another TikTok video so to dye Easter eggs you don't want to miss this it's gonna be fun Hi, it's Master TV at Vail. We want to invite you all to the Wacky Winter Reading Program. It's open to all ages. All you have to do is read 10 books or a thousand pages. For more information, go on our website, tv8vail.com. And thank you to our sponsor, the Eagle Valley Library District. Think Big features top kid inventors who face off against each other to see who can come up with the most innovative and creative invention. And Think Big Kids acquire and showcase their skills in creativity, science, marketing, design, and don't forget, teamwork. Check your local listings and watch the world's most innovative kids. They create and invent new toys, games, websites, and new modes of transportation. Tune in to Think Big. America was built on a love for the outdoors. We are a nation of sportsmen blessed with magnificent natural resources. With broad interests across water and field, we are united in our devotion to nature and conservation. Join us every week for the best shows celebrating the outdoor lifestyle. Outdoor America. Live free. Did you know that all Eagle County residents and visitors can get a free Eagle Valley Library District card? All you need is a photo ID. You get our online databases and resources, free music, free streaming, all from wherever you have internet access. Free audiobooks and e-audiobooks straight to your phone. Go into your Eagle Valley Library District branch today and get your library card. Hi, I'm Gretchen Fleshaw, host of TV8 Vail. From fashion to food, from film to festivals, experience a unique look at the boutiques, spas, restaurants, and venues that make the Valley so special. Join me for Glitz and Glam. Find it in Good Morning Vail or at our website at tv8vail.com. I can't wait for our next adventure. Dog Tales is America's premier dog lovers magazine show. This series is all about dogs and the people who love them. Featuring dogs of all sizes, shapes, and breeds, keeping you up to date with all the latest news from the dog world. Sit back and enjoy a fun program for the whole family. Check your local listings and tune in to Dog Tales. TV8, there's more for you on 92. Serving the local community 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Good morning, Vail! We're here. We're here. We're we, back in the kitchen. We are back in the kitchen, but we're actually not cooking anything. We are dying Easter eggs. You know, I'm a big fan of trying things that I see on the internet, so I don't know how successful it will be, but we're going to make it happen. So I saw this really fun way of doing like a tie-dye Easter egg with shaving cream. 
huh. and food coloring. So we're going to give it a shot. What do, you, what do you think? You think it's going to work? I know I've got extra <laughs> shaving cream around my house. Well, it's too bad you didn't bring any, but we've yeah. got some here. So Kevin, if you want to hand me the shaving cream, what we're going to do is just spread it on the bottom of this pan Okay. as much as you want to, and we'll just spread it around. And then we've got the food color. Well, <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see how messy this is about to get. And this is the fun part. Supposedly, nice job. this is an easier way of doing things. And then we just spread it around the pan, just like that. So we got just regular cheap, um, cheap shaving cream. Just like you've got words. cake batter, and you're just going to spread it around. It's the true. same technique. Maybe we'll put a little bit more in there. Just Why a little not? bit more. Why not? But, uh, Kevin, did you dye Easter eggs often? Oh, always. As a kid, we did. We got yeah. the crayons out. We had, I forget the brand of it, but uh, you have... The, you know, the little cardboard thing with the the wire dipper. And the wire it dipper. It never worked, and the egg always <laughs> ended up on the floor. But you know, oh, or your had fingers, fun. you know. It yeah, is. you had colored fingers. You go to school and. Right. Okay. Cool. So this is really easy. You can do this like I, apparently with friends, like with kids, and little kids. But okay. I also like doing trying things and like kind of keeping traditions alive. So we spread the shaving cream along here, and then we've got our food coloring. So I'm gonna pick two colors, and you pick two colors. And we also have a few that we're just marinating in salad yeah, I'll pick colors. Two colors. As well. Okay. And then I'll pick two colors. All right. So you should pick two colors, and then I'll pick two got colors. It. Okay. And we're just going to uh, just kind of sprinkle them where we feel like we want to. And you can pick wherever you want to put yours. And we'll just, we can either oh, do can like I, or two or colors or we can do all around. colors. I don't care. Whatever you want. Okay. And just do a few there. So we just put a little drop. Just a little drop. Okay. I'm going to give you a straw. Oh. And we're going to spread them, spread them around. I'm going to do two colors on my side. And we're just kind of, and this is just regular food coloring. You really don't have to get fancy with it. This is a gel food coloring, so it's going to be hopefully a little bit more vibrant. And then we're going to take our straw, and you're just going to start mixing it around a little bit, okay. seeing what happens. You can even use a spoon if you want to, if it's not spreading as fast. Sometimes I think, I think if I had to guess, the liquid food coloring might do a little bit better as far as spreading it around. Instead of the gel. Instead of the gel. The gel. So we'll put a little bit more gel in. Put some gel in. You know, we're just doing that. And uh, then the fun part is we hard boiled our eggs ahead of time. We did. And then we soaked it in, um, in vinegar for about 10 minutes or so. Yeah. yeah so that should give it a way for the, um, the color of the food coloring to really like solidify and stick to the shell. Yeah. So the <laughs> eggshell is a semi porous thing. It is. It is. Is it? I, I'm just. Uh, we're guessing. We're going to go ahead and guess. You know, we're not scientists. Gonna, we're not scientists. I'm very very confident about that statement I just made. I, you should be because you are very, kind of a science-based guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. And it then we're, we're doing this. We're just spreading it around. And then we're going to just put an egg in here. And you can kind of um, just mix it around and see what happens. So you put an egg on your side and see if it turns out tie-dye. You know, this is what we see on the internet. So sometimes it's successful and sometimes, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. We're kind of like the myth busters here. <laughs> we are. We're going to bust this myth one way or another. We are. And you just kind of push it around and... You can like spread it around and you can coat it in the, uh, in the, in the shaving cream. And you want to let it sit for a few minutes because it will definitely dye yeah. it and do a little bit better. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. I think my egg is going to be absolutely spectacular. I think it might be too. And then once you're done with it, from what I've seen, you just leave it coated on there. And then you wipe it off and it should be good. You let it sit for at least 10 minutes at so the color can solidify. So I've had some eggs here mm -hmm. that have been here for about 10 minutes. We're going to wipe this off. See what happens. See what happens. It looks great. <laughs> He's laughing at me. No, it's actually. It works. Yeah, it works. And it's definitely a little bit messier, but at least you're not spilling like vinegar and right. you know food dye all over your clothes. I'm wearing our TV8 aprons because I wore a. You're fancy. official. I am official, but I also wore a white shirt on the day that we're dying Easter eggs. So didn't really think that one through here. <laughs> But you know what? It's okay. Our TV8 wardrobe did not <laughs> put you in the right direction it's, on that one. It's true. Correct? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but here we go. So yeah. look at that. That's it looks great. So I think the longer you let it sit, the better it is. We also heard you can use balsamic vinegar, and it'll actually make the colors a little bit more vibrant. So we have one egg soaking in balsamic. Right here. And then we're going to put it into the colors and or into the shaving cream and see what happens. So hopefully it'll be a little bit brighter. But yeah, we'll stick yeah, it's that a maybe in the green, and we'll see how we compare with the two yeah, green eggs. Exactly. And you can see that these are starting to look tie-dye. 
But Kevin, you were telling me about another way that you can really make this look tie dye. And how do you do that? You crack the shell a little bit? So if bit? you crack the shell a little bit and then put it in the coloring, a lot of times, then when you peel the egg, the inside is actually got that spider web look. Oh yeah, that's fun. So you've got an egg there. Let's try that. All right. How do I do this? So you just crack it, like keep cracking it, like just like yeah, like that. Yeah, but you got to crack it. Oh, well, wrong egg. <laughs> this one is not cooked. <laughs> so we like to do practical jokes here at TV. So I actually took an egg that we hadn't boiled yet. Here, Kim, use this egg. Kevin is always playing yeah. jokes on me. Oh. <laughs> And I think that's my favorite one by far. We always crack jokes behind the scenes. <laughs> Literally <never>. crack jokes. <laughs> no pun intended there. But you know what? I, uh, I'm having a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see what these eggs look like when we're done letting them marinate in the shaving cream and the food coloring and cleaning up. And we're going to scramble an egg here in a few minutes. So. <laughs> we'll show you how to scramble an egg. Very basic. It's going to be easy. But that's a, that's a fun one. It's a great way to, to hang out with your friends and family. And, you know, it's not as messy. It doesn't smell as bad if you're using a lot of vinegar. Yeah, and this one was kind of dried off. You've got the color. Yeah, it looks great. And then our tie-dyes are in there looking good. Yeah, looking great. So we'll so have to check back in on them. We'll check them out and uh, see what happens at the end of the show. Welcome aboard. Bobby Laurie and Nikki Noya have your ticket to everything you need for an on-the-go lifestyle. Grab your boarding pass. It's time to jet set. Hello, I'm Shervin Rezae, here with Chenna Garden in Avon, Colorado. My hobbies are obviously skiing. I've been skiing since I was three years old. In addition to that, music's always been my first passion, and you can see that alive and well at Chenna Garden with our little record nook, where we have over 300 records, and we'll continue to grow that collection and play vinyl records for you while you enjoy your cuisine. Chenna Garden is Avon's oldest running restaurant. We've been open since 1988 when my mother set up shop and wanted to begin offering Avon Colorado the best quality Chinese food that we could get. And I started working in the restaurant when I was eight years old as a dishwasher making a dollar a day. <laughs> and then uh, one of the servers pushed by my dad told me I should ask for a raise and then I got five dollars a day but then I had to put all twenty-five dollars at the end of the week into a savings account which actually helped me out in college. So after college I went out to New York for law school and I spent 15 out years out in New York City practicing law and working in-house which you know exposed me to a lot of restaurants all over the world all over the country and after getting exposure like that, I realized that we have this beautiful restaurant here that has so much potential. So in the fall of 2023, we came back, remodeled, and tried to get this back to give that special feel that I've known all my life here. We've been uh, offering a lot of new cuisines, including German cuisine with our good family friend, Gunther Schmidt, who's been serving up authentic German cuisine in the Valley for many, many decades. Why not? This is America. We can serve German food in a Chinese restaurant and we just let it try and after a year of it it's been building up some success and we're just having a lot of fun just seeing the look of bewilderment on every customer when they're like how am i getting german food in a chinese restaurant that's this good at this quality china garden is really all about that community and that first starts with the local community we always try to take care of all of us who are working hard grinding it so that we can also enjoy what this valley has to offer and through that, we get a nice mix of word of mouth tourists who come in. We're looking for something a little more authentic and that has a history with the Valley. I'm a proud member of the Avon Vale Valley community, lifelong member as I was born here. And I hope you come out and see us here at Chenna Garden. We're open every day, four to nine, any day the mountain's open. Cheers.
Welcome back to Good Morning Vale. It is a very ex existential day here on TV8 as we look at the local weather. 29 degrees getting up today. 50 degrees is going to be the high. Nice sunshine afternoon with possibly some clouds rolling in a little bit later as we look at Vale by the hour. Those clouds are going to come in a little bit later this evening. We're going to possibly see some of that spring mix of showers on the lower elevations and some snow up there in the mountains. 67 degrees in full sunshine in Denver certainly feels like a spring day there. 50 degrees in Vail, 53 in Avon, and 57 over in Eagles. Some nice weather still here throughout the valley. Low tonight, 26 degrees, 60% chance of precipitation, bringing in that wintry or summery mix, spring mix. The, the uh, rain, the snow, we'll see what happens. Obviously needs, needs some more snowfall up in those mountains as we see that base kind of dwindle just a little bit as we move through the end of the season. Now this is kind of what we're looking for. 50 degree weather on Friday and Saturday as those clouds start to roll in on Saturday. We're expecting snowfall on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday as those temperatures begin to dip out of the 50s into the 40s, then down into the 30s. So excited to see what that brings to get us through this last month of ski season. So very exciting to see that weather change, that dry spell kind of come to an end as we see some more precipitation moving into the valley. Now I had a chance to sit down and talk about a movie series called Bosco. It's about an escape from prison and everything that this man went through to be back with his family. Let's take a look. Well, now we've got a great series coming in, an unbelievable story um, that's on Peacock. And we've got the star of that show coming in to talk a little bit about how that's, that show originated and really a lot of what is going on there because there's so many different levels that this story, that this show can hit on. So welcome to the show. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing Good morning. great. I, I tell you, when, when I look at Bosco and that story, unbelievable. I mean, the, the, the whole premise behind the prison escape and what went behind that without with getting out. But the story goes much deeper than that. It talks, you know, it, it's about someone not growing up without a father. It's about just the life in general. And I love one of the lines in the story where freedom is a state of mind. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's more than just the body. The backstory is more than just about a guy growing up without a father. It's a guy who's determined to be a father and to get home to his unborn child so that he can be such. And uh, freedom is a state of mind because it's something that you find within. And I found it in solitary confinement. Sometimes it's about digging deep down inside and finding your meaning and purpose and and using and, and doing what you can for the sake of humanity where you find your meaning and purpose and that's to me that's freedom absolutely and and relentless doesn't even it's not even a term that really defines hmm. what happened here escaping a prison enduring everything that goes on and let's not even mention right now the possession charge which now with marijuana is legal in a majority of the states so a possession like that being put in prison and fighting back. Yeah, prison for 35 years for something that is pretty much essentially legal in most states across the United States. Uh, it was a heartbreaking experience. Uh, I persevered. Uh, it was fueled in determination and it motivates me today to use my voice and my experience to help prevent other people from going through that. So what are you doing now with that, with, with what you endured and what you went through, how are you out there today expressing your voice even more beyond this film? Because I know you're such a passionate person. How are you going out there and expressing to others what you went through and how to get through some of the sufferings maybe they're enduring right now? I think the message that I want to give out there is to show people what I've been through, but also to show people what I'm doing now and to show how when given an opportunity, many people who are in prison or who come from underprivileged communities can actually do something great. And I want to be that light. I want to be that inspiration to people from those communities 
and people from other communities who can help lend a hand to support people from such communities. Yeah, to hear that there's life after prison, a lot of people, when they're incarcerated, going through this, maybe they've given up. And, and this is such a wonderful message to leave. There is something more. There is something out there. What did you have to do as far as your role in writing the script and participating in everything that went on to deliver that message of what you went through? Phone calls, talking with this guy here and the director <laughs> while I was in prison and, and this bonding so that they can understand my passion and my vision. And they made it easy for me. I mean, this is the next Denzel Washington right here. <laughs> yep. And so he pretty much took it and ran with it. So what did you do when you got that, when you got that, that the, the, the phone calls and, and it mm -hmm. had to hit hard to your heart. How did you transcribe those conversations into what we're seeing on the screen? Um, I, I think, you know, um, anytime you're playing somebody uh, that actually lived through something, um, there's a lot of responsibility there. Um, so my biggest thing was just making sure that um, I really focused on the, the, the impact that um, having a, a daughter like meant to him and how inspired he was to get out just to be there in, in her life because of something that he didn't really have growing up. And that's something that I can relate to as well. Um, but other than that, you know, Bosco made it super easy for me because he trusted me from the jump. You know, like he really showed me that I had all of his trust and that, you know, he wanted me to play the role. So that made it a little bit more easy for me. Uh, and I'm, I'm really happy with, with what we got done. And Aubrey, you really have to feel about that trust because I'm sure from Bosco's standpoint, there wasn't a lot of trust to give at that point. Everything that he endured, probably the trust, the trust mm -hmm. bucket was empty. And to give you that trust is unbelievable. So what a monumental task and way to deliver it for Peacock on this. It meant the world. It meant the world. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, I can't thank you enough for joining us this morning in Vail, Colorado, telling the story. And I'm going to have all the viewers turn, tune in to Peacock to see this unbelievable, just mind-blowing, very emotional series and uh, show that you've got coming out. So you're going to have a lot of people cheering you on. Uh, for, for, for years to come. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate the support. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Learn the latest in science each week and how it relates to everyday life. From space exploration to plant biology to the latest in high-tech advances Every new scientific development is explored and explained in an understandable way. Amazing stories each week. Watch Science Now. TV8 te brinda la mejor programación en español todos los días. Sintoniza Conexión Latina los lunes, miércoles y viernes a las 7 de la tarde con repeticiones los fines de semana. Además, te presentamos nuestro nuevo programa Sabores y Creaciones, donde hemos juntado tus recetas y manualidades favoritas en un solo lugar los martes y jueves a las 7 de la tarde. Y por último, disfruta de Daily Flash Latino, con noticias y entretenimiento en tendencia los sábados a las 7 de la tarde. Te esperamos por el canal 92 de Comcast, nuestra página de Facebook TV8 Conexión Latina, nuestro canal de YouTube TV8 Bell Good Morning Bell o nuestra página web tv8bell.com. Lisa Pascal. And I'm Andrea Jackson. Welcome to Life Love Shopping. Do you have any personal stories you can share? Do I? <laughs> yes, I so, do. So even though you work for some good deals, too good to miss on Flash Deals. Now check this out. Studies show spending time outdoors can help with depression, lowering blood pressure, and overall health and happiness.
When you're in Vail, you're in vacation mode and you need a flexible home tour experience that fits into your schedule. We've transformed how you view and buy homes in the Vail Valley. With immersive, cutting-edge technology, you can explore properties 10 times faster. In our lounge, we guide you through this digital world on a 16-foot screen where you can imagine your next home in comparison to your favorite recreational spots. Say goodbye to multi-day home tours and hello to a quick stop between your other plans. That's the power of the immersion theater. There are so many gorgeous resort properties here in the Vail Valley, but this one in particular has been around for over 30 years in the Valley and it is just absolutely stunning to walk into. Joining me on the couch today is the marketing manager of the Height Vale, Tor Lindsay. How are you? Doing very good. How are you? Great to have you here. So, love the property. It's just a gorgeous space and Thank tell you. me all about it. So, we are coming to a close in the winter season. How has it been? <laughs> the winter has been eventful, uh, you know, as it is for, for all of us here in the Valley, um, but it was a great winter. Um, we did finally get some snow that came through and uh, that really helped us. Um, and so, yeah, it was, uh, we're ending on a strong note and we're really excited for the summer. That's great. So, the Height Vale, it's just a stunning property and, you know, and what would you say sets you apart from the other resorts here in town? Sure, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um we really lean into, we love our mountain heritage and the founding story of Vail Mountain. Uh, and so we really lean into that story. And so I think what sets us apart is that we, all of our design aesthetic, all of the food offerings that we have, the beverage offerings that we have are all tied to that founding story of Vail Mountain, the 10th Mountain Division, uh, Pete and Earl, mm -hmm. uh, kind of the, the two founders of Vail Mountain. So um, what makes us unique is really our connection to that, that origin story of Vail Mountain. I love that you have woven that into your essence. So talk to me about the dining experiences. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So we have Revel Lounge, which is kind of our, our fine dining option. Um, our head chef, Axel Torres, um, has been in the Valley for a while, and he is a magician. Um, he likes to cook with you know local ingredients, local kind of flair. Um, he has a local Colorado lamb chop that he's very proud of. Um, he's always coming up with kind of creative new things to, to put on the menu. So um, that is Revel Lounge. Uh, that is kind of our more upscale option. And then um, we have 10th Mountain uh, Bar, which is in our lobby. And that is uh, really unique because a dollar from every drink that is sold in that 10th Mountain Bar goes to Vail Veterans Foundation. That's, so, that's fantastic. Yeah, I love the support there. So you really do ingrain or embody the, the history of our valley with the 10th Mountain Division and a bar and the money. It's great. It's yeah, really wonderful. We, we really try to, so. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So we're moving into springtime yeah. officially. So you've got a great patio. You've got other places to be entertained. So tell me about what's going on with the opera scene. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so um, we do have uh, our apre deck um, where we currently, we have like a s'mores activation that we do every night. The kids love it, the families love it. Um, but for the springtime, we are holding what we call our spring spritz. Okay. And so from 4 to 7 p.m., uh, Thursday through Sunday, throughout the rest of ski season, uh, we will be having Colorado craft beer, cocktails, kind of a summer cookout menu, inspired menu out there. Um, so yeah, we just want people to kind of come and enjoy the sun and, and you know have a few drinks and hang out with their great place to bring your family, your dogs, et cetera. You know, it's outdoors, kind of the outdoor patio vibe uh, is great. what we're going for. So it's a dog friendly patio. It is, our, our hotel is, yeah. uh, our resort is, is dog friendly. So we love our, our four legged friends and uh, yeah, we always want them to come hang out. That's great. So you've got the dining, you've got this fantastic opera scene. Um, you also have experiences and excursions. So tell yeah. me tell me about the experiences and excursions, what's been popular through the winter, sure. and then what do you have coming up for the summer? Yeah, um, so we do have, we do offer guided experiences. So we partner with um, a, a company, Adventure IO, and so they work with local guides mm -hmm. and allow guests and, and even you know anyone who is up for one of these adventures uh, to, to book directly on our website. Um, so we have backcountry skiing, we have, um, you can ski with an Olympian, uh, we have whiskey tasting at the 10th Mountain uh, Distillery, um, we have sort of 
you cook with a chef type experiences. Um, so we have a, a full kind of range of, of different experiences. Um, the skiing with a backcountry guide is, is really popular and has been mm -hmm. popular this winter. Um, you know, everyone kind of wants to get into the backcountry, but there's a little safety barrier and things like that. So going with the guide really, you know, has everyone feeling safe and, and comfortable. And so um, the guide is, he works with Paragon Guides, uh, which is a local company here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's a great experience. This summer, um, we'll have things like hiking, mountain biking with a, a professional mountain biker. Mm -hmm. uh, mushroom foraging is a really popular one. So yeah, lots of great experiences and all available to book directly on our website. Well, I, I love that the variety of experiences you have is for everybody. So you know, maybe people come visit in the winter, but they're not skiers or snowboarders. So. And so they have options to just really feel like they're still immersed into the culture here without having to do the snow sports. And then exactly. the same for the summer, summertime with like the mushroom foraging and not having to do mountain biking because I'm not a mountain biker myself but I'm sure I would probably enjoy it if it was guided and somebody showed me how to do it. Absolutely. That's wonderful. So what has been your favorite experience this winter that you've uh, that you've been part of with the height? Oh gosh. I know. Um, Big question. That's uh, <laughs> The winter has been great and uh, you know it feels like it's flown by. Uh -huh. um, I would say my favorite experience this winter uh, has actually been going on one of those guided. Uh, we got to, uh, some of the staff members got to go and join the guided backcountry trip. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of a, a backcountry enthusiast uh, at the beginner level, and so <laughs> going with a guide and kind of hearing, um, you know, experiencing what our guests would experience who do book that, that adventure um, was a, a great experience for me. That's so awesome. just getting out and, uh, you know, li living the, the experience that we're trying to, you know, get, sure. get folks to book. So if you were to book it, you know, what can you expect with that? Like, what, what did they teach you? Did they show you, like, avalanche safety, all the different things? Yeah, so it is important, you know, it is not, mm -hmm. um, I would say, like an avalanche one. Yeah class. Um, the, the guide is very highly certified and very knowledgeable about the avalanche terrain. Um, typically, he's going to avoid, you know, dangerous mm -hmm. avalanche terrain. It's kind of a ha everyone have a good time and be safe type of trip. So um, <clears throat> they will provide all the equipment that you need. So mm -hmm. they'll provide the beacon, the probe, the shovel, uh, split board if you need that. Um, obviously, <clears throat> he will uh, also include uh, there's some lunch included okay. uh, at the end of the day so it's a, it, there's an option for a half day like a 9 to 12 type thing and then a full day which is like a 9 to 4 um, so they'll come pick you up at the resort they'll take you out to the zone um, he's got some lunch for you he's got some safety pointers and he's just gonna you know as you're skinning up there's a lot of time so he'll be kind of talking at you and guiding you through what he's seeing um, you know, just kind of familiarizing himself with, with the group and with the members that are doing it. But, um, yeah, he's always imparting knowledge about what he's seeing in the, in the environment, in the zone. And then uh, it's time to ski down before you know it. I love that. So you mentioned equipment that is provided when you're doing these excursions. Correct. But another really awesome feature that you have is that if you're staying at the hotel, you also provide equipment for adventures and things. So tell me about the equipment yeah, lockers. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah, so we have what we call our adventure locker. Mm -hmm. Um, and our adventure locker is um, we offer as part of your resort fee, you have access to any of the equipment that's in there. So it's seasonally based. In the wintertime, we have snowshoes. We have really nice Oakley goggles. We have uh, like bibs and things like that. If maybe it's a chillier day than what you brought, you know, the sun shines in Vail a lot, but maybe not always in the wintertime. So mm -hmm. um, if you need... Uh, a heavier layer of bibs or better goggles or you forgot your goggles or you forgot your gloves you're more than welcome to go to the adventure locker and simply check out what uh, whatever equipment you need in the summertime we're going to shift that we'll have bikes in there um, we'll have scooters skateboards for kids things like that so yeah it's a, a really cool feature of our resort that's a great option especially if you want to be involved or you don't necessarily want to bring all of your gear when you come visit so exactly. i love that option that's yep. great well tour where can we go for more information or to follow along and see what other cool and fun events that you're doing throughout the year Absolutely. Um, you, we have everything available on our website, theheightvale.com, mm -hmm. and please follow us on Instagram at theheightvale. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you're doing great things over there. So the spring spritz on the patio, yeah. I can't wait to, uh, to check that out and to just see uh, as the seasons change, just be out and about in, in nature. It's great. Yeah. I appreciate that. It's wonderful. Now we've got a bit more left on the show. We'll be right back after this.
for fun and adventure, join me on Elizabeth Stanton's Great Big World. Find out where I'll be going next and which celebrities I'll be bringing along with me. I'll show you amazing destinations with lots to explore, and you'll get to know my celebrity guests the way they really are, up close and personal. We'll travel the world, experience new cultures, and together, try to make a difference. I'm Elizabeth Stanton, saying the world's a big place, and I'm going to show it to you. Eyepieces of Veil has been a fixture in the Veil community for over 30 years. From designer frames and sunglasses to high-performance sports frames, prescription goggles and in-demand accessories like helmets, goggle lenses, and foldable reading glasses, our inventory raises the optical bar. Visit one of our seven locations today and see why generations of loyal customers return time after time for our unmatched service and inventory. Eyepieces, the art of vision. Do you love the outdoor lifestyle? Make sure you tune in every day at 8 p.m. to catch Scoreboard Nation. It's an outdoor lifestyle show dedicated to your three favorite mountain towns, Vail Beaver Creek, Park City, and Reno Tahoe. Join us for an incredible venture. Find us on TV8 Vail, Park City Television, or at thescoredboardnation.com. We can't wait to see you there. Welcome back to Good Morning Vale. We have a lot of great segments out there, whether it's vibes going on with Avisia or glitz and glam with Gretchen, there's a lot of things out there to be had. So let's take a look at a local business with Gretchen in her glitz and glam, Lion's Head Jewelry. Welcome to the Glitz and Glam with Gretchen. I'm your host, Gretchen Pleshaw, here in beautiful Lion's Head. I am so excited to show you the Lion's Head Jewelry Fossil and Mineral Gallery. Let's take a look.
Welcome to the Glitz and Glam with Gretchen. I'm your host, Gretchen Fleshaw. I'm so excited to be at the Lion's Head Jewelers Mineral and Fossil Gallery here with Tina, who I adore, and she knows all things minerals, fossils, and I have to say crystals, which I love. <laughs> how are you doing, Tina? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. I am so in awe of this store. It's a gallery. It's a store. You can, It's like a one-stop shop. It's a moment. I feel like it's literally a vibe. I love it here. Yeah, we um, love to just spread positive energy. We have lots of beautiful crystals, jewelry, yes. fossils, um, something for everybody. And that's what I really love is looking outside, looking in. It is high end and it's beautiful, mm -hmm. but there's children coming in here learning about especially the woolly mammoth behind us. <laughs> yeah, he's really a sight to see. He's our new baby of the gallery. Um, we love to have families in here. We love to educate. We love to learn. Um, so we just like to keep it, you know, light and airy and fun. And I love all the crystals, the fossils, and it's so neat because I saw earlier when the store was open that a woman came in here and she was drawn to a certain crystal. And you have crystals all different sizes, prices, something for everyone, like you were saying. Yeah, we definitely um, believe that crystals find you. You don't really find your crystals. They pick you. I love that. Um, so it's kind of like a beautiful thing to come in here and look at different crystals and see different fossils and just like kind of explore the store. And we love educating and just like letting people know what things are. And who is the newest member of this store that is right behind us? Uh, this is Manny the Mammoth. He is just an incredible specimen. We got him a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, it's just so cool to think that um, a creature from the Ice Age um, is in our gallery. So awesome. <laughs> Super cool. So they roamed the earth about 300,000 years ago um, and then they went extinct uh, between 4,000 to 10,000 years ago so that's about the age of Manny. Um, and, and how did he, sorry to interrupt no, you, yeah. but how did he get called Manny? How um, did he get the, his name? The kids just um, would come in and uh, Manny from Ice Age, the yes. movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. And so it kind of just fit with him and <laughs> that's his coined name now, yeah. Well, and I love that I know he is for sale as well. Yeah. But you said you're going to keep him here for a while so people can really learn all about Manny. And I, yeah. that's something I love about this store is that you come in and it, it's an experience. You can buy things, you can look at things, you are learning from other people. You're really educated and knowledgeable. Everyone that works here knows about the, obviously, about everything, but especially about Manny. So it's yeah. really cool. Kind of museum trip like. <laughs> kind of, yeah. And, you know, I think that um, we all just take pride in the fact that we try to learn as much as we can about every fossil that comes through yeah. here. Um, and we know a lot about minerals and, uh, you know, the chemical makeups of the minerals too. So and cool. um, we just try to educate ourselves. And um, we have a lot of geologists and paleontologists that come through and they actually educate us, which is really nice That's too. That's so neat. Yeah. So it's just like we coin ourselves as just kind of also, you can look at beautiful things but you could also learn a lot about history and beautiful things as well. I love that and I know that something that is really different and makes you guys unique is the price points. Right. There is something for everyone in here. We just saw a little girl buy, a, I think I'm gonna get one too, a really <laughs> neat it was a quartz or a crystal. It was the healing the heart. Yeah, yeah. selenite heart. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have price points everywhere. So if you're a high-end collector, we have something for you. If you're a family coming in looking for something like just a little gift to take yeah. home with you, we have lots of different price points, um, $5 all the way up to thousands of dollars in the gallery. So something for everybody. That is so amazing. And yeah. what is your favorite part? I know that Working here must be a dream come true, especially for you, who loves crystals and loves all of that. Yeah, it was all, um, everything happens for a reason, and I don't really call this a job. It's really a passion of mine. Yeah. I love crystals. I love learning, and every day is such a learning experience, so... That's so awesome. Yeah. And do you find that, because I know you're right in the heart of Lion's Head. Mm -hmm. Where are you located exactly, just so everyone kind of knows? Um, we're located up the stairs from the ice rink, and we're kind of in the heart of Lion's Head. So we're kind of centrally located. Cool. And do you see a lot of families come through here? Do you see just... What is it? Who are your main buyers? Or is it across the board, like you were saying? It's across the board. It's such a beautiful thing. We have people from all over the world that come in and visit us. Um, we also have tons of families in here. Um, and we just love talking about everything that there is to talk about. So. Well, right now you have, I can 
but I can't wait to show everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are crystals all around. The energy feels so good. There's fossils. There's Manny, our dear friend behind us. <laughs> what, I know this is really hard, loaded question, but what is your favorite, if you had to pick a few items in the store right now, because I know you have things coming and going. Yeah. What is, yeah, what are some of your favorites? Um, I have a clear quartz over there that I love dearly, so I'll be sad when she leaves. <laughs> I was going to say, that has yeah. to be hard. You're like, oh, yeah. I'll buy. <laughs> it's all energy. Um, the woolly rhino in the window, who is also going to be leaving, but we have another one coming in because I didn't even know a whole lot, so I'm very educated in what cool. he now is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but you know what? They're all um, special in their own way. I love <laughs> You're like, right, we don't discriminate yeah. against the different crystals. I love all the love. babies in here. All the babies. <laughs> yeah. And I saw in the window there were some... Um, Oh, they're the kind of toys for kids as well. Yeah. Yeah. What? Tell us oh. a little bit about that because I thought that was really interesting as well. Yeah. Yeah. We have um, Bumblebee and Optimus Prime, yes. and it's how um, did I not know that? I I'm know. <laughs> Recycled metal artist from oh. Las Vegas. Cool. Um, you could see some of their bigger pieces at like Caesar's Palace and stuff like that. Oh, um, wow. But we carry the smaller guys and they're a big hit. And like I said, it's all recycled car parts and motorcycle parts. Oh, and so cool. they're really unique. But that's, I, I know, I'm a big fan of this store, obviously. Yeah. I shouldn't even say store, it's a space. It yeah. really is a moment. It is. It is a moment. It is an experience. Experience. Yeah. I like that better. It yeah. is, it's more, yeah, classier. An experience. <laughs> but truly, you come in here and you're just in awe of everything. And then to think that you can not only take it all in, but you can buy it and you can purchase it. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty amazing. Yeah. We love everyone to come in and take a piece home, um, you know, whatever calls to you. And um, that's the biggest thing is we just love uh, seeing the energy flow through here and spreading positive energy. And you can feel it. I mean, the moment I, today has been a rush day, you know, <laughs> it's so much going on and we're all a little tired from the summer and I walked in and I felt refreshed and good and just good vibes, centered, I should say. Yeah, we're yeah. really mindful um, as a team uh, from the top down, you know, we're all family um, and we are really mindful of where we put certain things and we're very aware of all that. the energy and like how it flows. So Tina, I know we've talked a lot about the fossils and as well as beautiful crystals, but I know you guys have gorgeous jewelry. Tell me a little bit about that because yeah. I was kind of eyeing it as I came in. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of beautiful jewelry. We have um, a wide range of jewelry as well. We yeah. have everything from very high end um, GIA certified rubies, sapphires, and wow. diamonds and gold. Um, we have lots of sterling silver um, and different minerals um, in and that respect too. And I saw some turquoise. I am obsessed with turquoise. You have like a wall. I was so yeah. excited. Yeah. We're really proud of our Native American um, section. Cool. Just gorgeous jewelry from New Mexico and Arizona. Um, all different types of turquoise from all over set in sterling silver. I love that. The jewelry is stunning. I'm Thank like, you. if anyone wants to get me a piece. <laughs> Yeah, they're really beautiful pieces, and um, I think that a lot of people, we have like a wide variety of, yeah. for everybody's taste. I agree. It's yeah. stunning. Thank you so much for everything today. It's been, I can't wait to come in and shop. Yeah, you're welcome. Come again. <laughs> oh, I will. Yeah. <laughs> and keep right here for more of the Glitz and Glam with Gretchen. host of Democracy Now! Our independent news hour offers diverse perspectives and unique opinions often unheard in the mainstream media, live as the news unfolds. Tune in for Democracy Now!, The War and Peace Report, weekday mornings at 9 and evenings at 6 on TV8 Vail, Comcast Xfinity, Channel 92. There's more for you on Channel 92.
More than ever, kids need information to help them better understand their surroundings and to better protect themselves. Each week, this program works with the various law enforcement agencies across the country and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, spotlighting several missing cases, hoping someone, like you, might have information that will lead to finding these individuals. Join us in exploring the everyday lives of community members here in the Vale Valley. Hear their inspiring stories of how they came here, their contributions to our community, and why they chose to call this place home. We want you to be one of our neighbors. If you would like to be featured or nominate someone to be featured, please send an email to danielle at tv 8 We look forward to featuring your story right here on TV8. Do you love the outdoor lifestyle? Make sure you tune in every day at 8 p.m. to catch Scoreboard Nation. It's an outdoor lifestyle show dedicated to your three favorite mountain towns, Vail Beaver Creek, Park City, and Reno Tahoe. Join us for an incredible venture. Find us on TV8 Vail, Park City Television, or at thescoredboardnation.com. We can't wait to see you there. Welcome back to Good Morning Vale. Let's take a quick look outside at that local weather. Getting up today at 29 degrees, high today at 50. Those spring-like temperatures still coming our way. Looking at the, later on this afternoon and this evening, that I-70 quarter, Denver, you can't ask for any better weather than that. 67 degrees in Denver, 50 in Vail, 53 and 57 over in Eagle. So a lot of great temperatures out there still to be had. Tonight, gonna see a wintry mix, a little bit of snowfall coming in, and then moving into that five day, this is what we like to see, an end of that dry spell as some snow showers move in on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday to add a little bit of base to those mountains to get us through to the end of ski season. Just a month left. Just a month left, and we are all about Whew. that base. So. We're all about the base. We, <laughs> we are, that. but you know what? It's been a fun show. It's been Lots a fun, fun show. Kevin's prank that he pulled on me with cracking the egg, that was pretty funny. I just crack her up. Yeah. That's what I do. He does just crack me up. But we had, I think this was a successful. TikTok. Yeah. TikTok. It worked. Shaving cream, eggs. We've got all the eggs right here. Let's get a good look at these because this is exactly what we did. It turned out beautifully. They really then, did. And then we can see, like over here, there's the egg that Kim did. <laughs> It's still raw. Um, it didn't color out well, unfortunately, but the rest of them did. So we've got very nice colors with these Barbasol. You got me again, ladies and gentlemen. Another One joke. More time. Let's see how many times Kevin can prank Just wait till April on Fool's a show. Day. It's pretty great, but you know, lots of fun. I hope that this was a, a fun activity that you can take and do with your friends and family as we approach Easter next week, which will be really great. Having a but great time with the Easter eggs. We are, and it's uh, always fun with uh, with Kevin in the kitchen. We've done a, a few things in the kitchen yeah. today. But tune in tomorrow, more Good Morning Vale. Look at the local weather and some exciting guests. We'll see you then. Good morning, Vale. See what lies in store for you. There's so many things to see and do. Summer, winter, spring, or fall. You're home in the Rockies. Are you looking for exciting and nutritious recipes to cook at home? 